Hello everyone. I hope you are doing great. Firstly, I would like to congratulate you all for taking up a course on fundamentals of cloud computing. It is great to have you all on board. The course will be taught by two instructors including me, Komal Rani and my colleague Nitesh Pendnekar. We have covered up all the essentials of cloud computing and we hope it helps you enhance your knowledge and skills. Now let us look at the course content. The course is divided into five segments and it covers all the basics of cloud and cloud computing. The course will begin with an introduction to cloud. Moving ahead, it will include the essential characteristics of cloud followed by different services and deployment models in cloud and ending with various opportunities in the cloud computing domain. So what for the wait? Let's get deep dive into the concepts. Cloud has become the new buzzword of the IT industry since the past few decades. Now, let us understand what exactly is cloud. Cloud is nothing but an internet space. It is a space which is easily accessible and we can store data into that space. The cloud can be also used as a remote storage for personal usage. You can think of cloud as a data on the internet servers. A server is nothing but a computer that provides data to other computers. Widely speaking, the term cloud refers to servers that are accessed over the internet and the software and databases that run on those servers. Cloud servers are located in data centers all over the world. By using cloud computing, users and companies do not have to manage physical servers themselves or run those software applications on their own machines. The cloud enables users to access the same files and applications from almost any device because the computing and storage takes place on the servers in a data center instead of locally on the user device. This is why a user can log into the Instagram account on a new phone after their old phone breaks and still find the old account in place with all the photos, images, videos and conversation history. It works the same way with the cloud. Cloud email providers like Gmail or Microsoft Office 365 and with cloud storage providers like Dropbox or Google Drive. For businesses, switching to cloud computing removes some IT cost and overhead. For instance, they no longer need to update and maintain their own servers. As the cloud vendor they are using will do that. This especially makes an impact for small businesses that may not have been able to afford their own internal infrastructure but can outsource their companies to operate internationally. This is because employees and customers can access the same files and applications from any location via cloud. After understanding all the buzzwords related to cloud, let us now focus on understanding what is cloud computing. Cloud computing is a delivery of computing services which may include server, storage, databases, etc. The term is generally used to describe data centers available to many users over the internet. It is a secure virtual storage space which can be used to access a variety of applications. Various services like Gmail, Outlook, Google Docs use cloud services. Consider an example of Google Docs. The content in the document is saved automatically on the cloud and it still exists if the system fails or shut down due to any of the reasons. The data is saved to the cloud until it's manually deleted. Further, we understand that cloud computing is possible because of a technology called virtualization. Virtualization allows for the creation of a simulated 
digital only virtual computer that behaves as if there were a physical computer with its own hardware and other requirements the technical term for such a computer is a virtual machine when properly implemented these virtual machines on the same host machine are sandboxed from one another so they don't interact with each other at all and all the files and applications from one virtual machine aren't visible to the other virtual machine even though they are on the same physical machine virtual machines also make more efficient use of the hardware hosting system by running many virtual machines at once one server becomes many servers and a data center becomes a whole host of the data centers able to serve many organizations and companies thus these cloud providers can offer the services to far more customers at once than they would be able to otherwise serve and they can do so at a low cost even if individual servers go down cloud servers in general should be always online and always available cloud vendors generally back up their services on multiple machines and across multiple regions users can access cloud services either through a browser or through an application connecting to the cloud over the internet that is through many interconnected networks regardless of what their device is using cloud computing has many advantages and it is one of the most widely used it services all across the world some of the advantages include reduced cost cloud helps in avoiding the setting up of unnecessary data servers the rate at which the resources can be made accessible is quite high moreover cloud services can be scaled at a global level within few minutes cloud services are also reliable in terms of storage space and availability moreover if you are worried about the price tag then it would come along with making the switch to cloud computing you aren't alone 20 to 30% of the organizations are concerned about the initial cost of implementing a cloud based server but those organizations who are attempting to weigh the advantages and disadvantages of using the cloud need to consider more factors than just the initial price they need to consider the roi once you are on the cloud easy access to the company's data will save the time and money in the project startups and for those who are worried that they'll end up paying for features that they neither need nor want must most cloud computing services pay as you go this means that if you don't take advantages of those cloud services the cloud has to offer then at least you won't have to be dropping money on it the pay as you go system also applies to the data storage space needed to service your stakeholders and clients which means that you will get exactly as much space as you need and not be charged for any other space that you do not require taken together these factors result in low cost and higher returns half of all ceo and it leaders surveyed by bitglass reported cost savings in 2015 as a result of using cloud based applications many organizations have security concerns which it comes to adopting a cloud computing solution after all when these files programs and other data aren't kept securely on site how one can know that they will be protected if you can remotely access your data then what's stopping a cyber criminal from doing something well quite a bit actually For one thing a cloud host full time job is to carefully monitor security which is significantly more efficient than a conventional in house system where an organization must divide its effort between all the IT concerns with security been only one of them 
and while most businesses do not like to openly consider the possibility of any internal theft the truth is that high percentage of data thefts occur internally and are perpetrated by the employees itself when this in case it can actually be much safer to keep sensitive information of the site of course it is all very abstract so let's consider some solid statistics rapid side rapid scale one of companies claims that 94% of the businesses saw an improvement in security after switching to cloud and 91% said that cloud makes it easier to also meet the government compliance request the key to this security is the encryption of the data being transmitted all over the networks and how it is stored in the databases by using encryption information is less scalable by the hackers cloud based services have different security settings that can be based on the user while 20% of the cloud users claim disaster recovery in 4 hours or less only 9 to 10% of the cloud users could claim the same your businesses has only a finite amount of focus to divide between all of the responsibilities if your current it solutions are forcing you to commit too much of your attention to your computer systems and data storage issues then you aren't going to be able to concentrate on how reaching business goals and satisfying the customers on the other hand by relying on the outside organization to take care of all your it hosting and infrastructure you will have more time to devote towards the aspect of your business and how directly affects your bottom line the cloud offer businesses more flexibility over versus hosting on a local computer and if you need extra bandwidth a cloud based service can meet that demand infrastructure as well this improved flexibility can make a significant difference to the overall efficiency of your business and the organization a 75% majority of respondents to an information week survey said the ability to quickly meet business demands was one of the most important reasons a business should move to the cloud environment if the business has two employees or more then you should be making collaboration a top priority after all there isn't much point to having a team if it is unable to work like a team cloud computing makes the collaboration simple process team members can view and share the information easily and securely across the web using a cloud based platform some cloud based services even provide collaborative social spaces to connect to the employees across the organization therefore increasing the interest and the engagement throughout the work collaboration may be possible without a cloud computing solution but it will be never easy nor it will be as effective apart from many advantages there are few disadvantages of cloud computing as well the main loophole in cloud computing is security cloud computing involves access to the third party so the user of the data has limited and restricted access and is dependent on the cloud service provider for the security and availability of the data moreover cloud is a distributed space and is more vulnerable to security threats downtime is often cited as one of the biggest disadvantages of the cloud computing since cloud computing systems are internet based service outages are always an unfortunate possibility and can occur for any reason although cloud service providers implement the best security standards and industry certifications storing data and important files on external service providers always opens up risks any discussion involving data must address security and privacy especially when it comes to managing the sensitive data 
we must not forget what happened at Codespace and the hacking of their AWS EC2 console which led to data deletion and eventual shutdown of the company. Their dependence on remote cloud-based infrastructure meant taking on the risk of outsourcing everything. Of course, any cloud service provider is expected to manage and safeguard the underlying hardware infrastructure of a deployment. However, your responsibility lies in the realm of user access management and it's up to you to carefully weigh all the risk scenarios. Though recent breaches of credit card data and user login credentials are still fresh in the minds of the people, steps have been taken to ensure the safety of the data. One such example is GDPR, that is General Data Protection Rule, which is enacted in the European Union to provide various more control over their data. Further, you still need to be aware of your responsibilities and follow best practices. In cloud computing, every component is online, which exposes potential vulnerabilities. Even the best teams suffer attacks and security breaches from time to time. Since cloud computing is built as a public service, it is easy to run before you learn to walk. After all, no one at the cloud vendor checks your administration skills before granting you an account. All it takes to get started is generally a valid credit card. Since the cloud infrastructure is entirely owned, managed and monitored by the service provider, it transfers minimal control over to the customer. To varying degrees, depending on the particular service, Cloud users may find they have less control over the function and execution of services within the cloud hosted infrastructure. A cloud provider's end user license agreement and management policies might impose limits on what a customer can do with their deployments. Customers retain control of the applications, data, and the services, but may not have the same level of control over their backend infrastructure. Vendor lock-in is another disadvantage of cloud computing. Easy switching between cloud services is a service that hasn't yet completely evolved, and organizations may find it difficult to migrate their services from one vendor to another. Differences between vendor platforms may create difficulties in migrating from one cloud platform to another, which could equate to additional cost and configuration complexities. Gaps or compromises made during migration could expose the data to additional security and privacy vulnerabilities. Adopting cloud solutions on a small scale and for short-term projects can be perceived as being expensive. However, the most significant cloud computing benefit is in terms of IT cost savings. Pay-as-you-go cloud services can provide more flexibility and lower hardware costs, but the overall price tag could end up higher than you expected. Cloud computing has a wide range of applications. Each and every organization, whether it be a small companies or big industries, most of them are migrating towards the cloud. Some major applications area of cloud include businesses, data storage, and backup along with education. Some business applications include services like MailChimp, which is an email publishing platform, PayPal, an account payment platform, Slack used for creating communication channels, Google G Suite, Box.com, Mozi are some of the data storage and backup applications. Educational applications include Google Apps, Chromebooks, AWS in education, and many more. Cloud-based e-commerce allows responding quickly to the opportunities which are emerging. Users respond quickly to the market opportunities as well as the traditional e-commerce response to the challenges quickly. 
cloud based e commerce gives a new approach to doing businesses with the minimum amount as well as with minimum time possible customer data product data and other operational systems are managed in the cloud environments previously organizations were installing antivirus software within the system even if we will see we personally also keep antivirus software in our system for safety from the outside cyber threats but nowadays cloud computing provides cloud antivirus software which means the software is stored in the cloud and monitors your system and organizations remotely these antivirus software identifies the security risk and fixes them sometimes also they give a feature to download the software in the medical field also nowadays cloud computing is used for storing and accessing the data as it allows to store the data and access it to the internet without worrying about any physical setup it facilitates easier access and distribution of information among the various medical professionals and individual patients similarly with the help of cloud computing offsite buildings and treatment facilities like labs doctors making emergency house calls and ambulances information etc can be easily accessed and updated remotely instead of having to wait until they have an access to an hospital computer many people get entertainment from the internet in that case cloud computing is a perfect place for reaching to a varied customer base therefore different types of entertainment industries reach the target by adopting a multi cloud strategy cloud based entertainment provides various entertainment applications such as online music video online games and video conferencing streaming services etc and it can reach any device but be it a tv a mobile a set up box or any other form it is a new form of entertainment called on demand entertainment with respect to this as a cloud the market is growing rapidly and is providing various services day by day so other applications of cloud computing includes social applications management application business applications art applications and many more in the future cloud computing is going to touch many sectors and providing some more applications and services to help the people we know the volume of big data is so high where storing it in a traditional data management system for any organization is highly impossible but cloud computing has solved that problem by allowing the organizations to store the large volumes of data in the cloud storage without worrying about the physical storage next comes analyzing the raw data and finding out insights or useful information from it is a big challenge as it requires high quality tools for data analytics and understanding cloud computing provides the biggest facility to organizations and companies in terms of storing and analyzing the big data setting up the platform for development and finally performing different types of testing to check the readiness of the product before being delivered to the customer cloud computing provides the easiest approach for deployment as well as testing even if the deployment by using the it resources with minimal expenses organizations find it more helpful as they get scalable and flexible cloud services for the product deployment testing and development after understanding all the parameters now we will understand the five most essential characteristics of cloud computing the very first characteristic is on demand self service a manufacturing organization can provision additional computing resources as needed without going through the cloud service provider a consumer can unilaterally provision computing capabilities such as server time and network storage as needed automatically without requiring any human interaction with each service provider this is one of the best cloud characteristic and advantage 
The next one is broad network access. This involves accessibility to various resources across diverse customer platforms. Capabilities are available over the network and access through standard mechanisms that promote use by thick and thin client platforms, example, mobile phones, tablet, laptops, and workstations. The very next service is resource pooling. It simply means that multiple customers are serviced from the same physical resources. The provider's computing resources are pooled to serve multiple customers using multi-tenant model with different physical and virtual resources dynamically assigned and reassigned according to the consumer demand. There is a sense of location independence in that the customer generally has no control or knowledge over the exact location of the provided resources but may be able to specify the location at a higher level of abstraction. Example, it can include the country, state or data center where the data can be stored. Example of resources include storage, processing, memory and network bandwidth. The next characteristic is the rapid elasticity. It implies that manufacturing organization can rapidly provision and deprovision any of the cloud computing services. Here, the capabilities can be elastically provisioned and released in some cases automatically to scale rapidly outward or inward along with the demand. To the consumer, the capabilities available for provisioning often appear to be unlimited and can be appropriated in any quality and quantity at any time. The last one is measured service. The resource usage is metered and manufacturing organizations pay accordingly for what they have been using so far. Here the cloud systems automatically control and optimize the resource use by leveraging a metering capability at some level of abstraction appropriate to the type of the service. Resource usage can be monitored, controlled and reported, providing transparency for the provider as well as the consumer. Let us now understand the three different service models in cloud computing. The very first model is IaaS, which is abbreviated as Infrastructure as a Service. It is a cloud computing offering in which a vendor provides user access to computing resources such as service, servers, storage, and networking. Organizations use their own platforms and applications within a service provider's infrastructure. It is basically a virtual platform and provision of computing resources over the cloud. In IaaS, cloud provider can give you the entire range of computing infrastructure such as a storage, the networking hardware, servers alongside maintenance and support. Businesses can opt for computing resources of their requirement without the need to install the hardware on their premises. Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Compute Engine are some of the leading IaaS cloud service providers. The next model is PaaS, which stands for Platform as a Service. Here, the service provider offers access to a cloud-based environment in which users can build and deliver their applications. The provider supplies underlying infrastructure. It is essentially a cloud base where you can implement PaaS services, develop, test and organize the different applications for your business. Implementing PaaS simplifies the process of enterprise software development. The virtual runtime environment provided by platform as a service 
gives a favorable space for developing and testing various applications. The entire resources offered in the form of server, storage and networking are manageable either by the company or a platform provider. Google App Engine, AWS Elastic Beanstalk are two typical examples of platform as a service. Platform as a service is an also subscription based and gives you flexible pricing options depending upon the business requirements. The last model is SAAS which stands for Software as a Service. Here, the service provider delivers software and applications through the internet. Users subscribe to the software and access it via the web. It is a model that gives quick access to cloud-based web applications. The vendor controls the entire computing stack which you can access using the web browser. These applications run on the cloud and you can use them by a paid license subscription or for free within some limited access. Software as a service does not require any installation or downloads in your existing computing infrastructure. This eliminates the need for installing applications on each of your computers with the maintenance and support all taken care over by the vendor. Some known examples of software as a service include Google G Suite, Microsoft Office 365, Dropbox, Cisco WebEx, etc. Let us now compare the three models and understand the difference between them. In infrastructure as a service, the service providers manage elements like the virtualization, servers, storage and networking. Other components like the operating system, middleware, runtime, data and applications are managed by the user itself. The examples of infrastructure as a service include AWS, Google, Compute Engine, Microsoft Azure, etc. In platform as a service, components like virtualization, servers, storage, networking, operating system, middleware, runtime are managed by the service provider itself and other components like the data and applications are managed by the user. Few examples of platform as a service include Google App Engine, Heroku, etc. The last model which is software as a service will include all the services managed by the service provider itself. The best example of software as a service is Google application like Gmail, Microsoft Office 365, many more. The cloud computing environment has four deployment models. The first one is the public cloud. This type of cloud services is provided on a network for public usage. Customers have no control over the location of the infrastructure. It is based on a shared cost model for all the users or in the form of a licensing policy such as pay as per use. It is also popular among businesses of all size for their web applications web mail and storage of any non-sensitive data. A public cloud is a service run by any external vendor that may include servers in one or multiple data centers. Unlike a private cloud, public clouds are shared by multiple organizations. Using virtual machines, individual servers may be shared by different companies, a situation that is called multi-tenancy because multiple tenants are renting server space within the same server itself. The next one is private cloud. It is an infrastructure used by standalone organizations and offers great control over security. The data is backed up by a firewall and internally can be hosted internally as well as externally. Private clouds are perfect for organizations that have high security requirement, high management demands and availability requirements as well. 
basically a private cloud is a server a data center or a distributed network wholly dedicated to one organization the next one is a hybrid cloud it comprises both a private and a public clouds but each can remain as separate entities a perfect example of this scenario would be that of an organization who uses a private cloud to secure the data and interacts with its customers using the public cloud basically hybrid cloud deployments combine public and private clouds and may even include on premises legacy services an organization may use the private cloud for some services and the public cloud for others or they may use the public cloud as a backup for the private cloud the final one is a community cloud community cloud is a mutually shared model between various organizations that belong to a particular community the community can include banks government organizations or any commercial enterprises there are many cloud service providers in the market among these many providers three have been constantly dominating the market which include amazon web services famously known as aws microsoft azure and google cloud platform known as gcp the others may include ibm cloud vmware rackspace technology etc aws is leading the market with the first position in the list followed by microsoft azure and google cloud platform that is gcp each service provider has some unique features and provides services across wide range of domains they also have different services along with different pricing models users can choose the service providers according to their requirements and need of the organization now we come to the end of the course after completely understanding the fundamentals of cloud computing now we will understand various job opportunities in the domain the very first opportunity is a cloud developer a professional cloud developer is the one who builds the computer applications and software these professionals are mainly responsible for implementing and maintaining the cloud infrastructure of their organization their main job role is to design develop analyze and maintain the cloud systems of the companies the next one is sysops administration sysop admin also known as system operations admin the primary responsibilities are to configure the aws cloud management and to monitor carefully the services and the usage they also are responsible for maintaining and managing the aws infrastructure and managing the bills and optimizing the cost the responsibilities also include learning metrics and carefully monitoring the health and the utilization of the aws resources on a full scale by making use of highly complex aws cloudwatch maintaining a backup of the resource is a different important responsibility the administrator has to perform aws on premise resource backup from time to time by making extensive use of aws services to reduce the time required for production he should make capable of deploying automation infrastructure by using the aws cloud formation technique it is highly responsibility to improve the resources and work on resource tagging to designate the cost and for thorough planning of budgeting governance and reporting it is one of the highly tough jobs in the cloud domain the next one is solutions architect a cloud solutions architect is responsible for converting the technical requirements of a project 
into the architecture and design that will guide the final product. The individual is also responsible for assisting in standards methodology. He is also responsible for establishment of an IT architecture, also adoption of architecture and other methodologies which will be used while making the project. He or she manages activities that can place during solution ideation, the solution design, designing and solution implementation along with deployment. Solution architect reviews business context for solutions to company challenges as well as defining the vision and requirements for the entire solution. Also, the work is to recommend potential options which may include prototype development, selecting the most optimal option for the design and the development of a roadmap for the selected solution. The solution architect also communicates the architecture to the stakeholders and collaborates and coordinates with existing domain architects in the formalization and adoption of new IT standards and procedures. The last one is the cloud practitioner. The responsibilities of a cloud practitioner include supervising the architecting and deployment of applications within the cloud platforms, developing plans for the adoption of the cloud solutions, management and monitoring of cloud platforms. Some qualities required may include supervising the architecting and development of applications within the AWS platform, developing plans for the adoption of cloud services, management and monitoring of cloud platforms, designing and building solutions and applications on the cloud knowledge. It also includes knowledge of C++, Java, Python and JavaScript, including bash scripting as well. Understanding of data security and compliance laws is also important. Other knowledge may include networking, security skills, familiarity with Linux operating system, wherein the cloud practitioner can compliance with the laws and other executing systems to understand completely the working of the system. The cloud practitioner may also require the knowledge and familiarity with the with Docker system working knowledge of tools used in the AWS environment such as Ansible, Chef, Jenkins and other tools necessary for the application building and development. This is all about the entire role of a cloud practitioner. Here we end up with a course. Congratulations on being completed with the entire course. We have understood the entire fundamentals of cloud computing and we would be happy to see you in our next courses. Thank you.